Hey, everybody, we got a great show for you it's today. It's going to be a real heater. Oh, my God. We're going to be talking about Taylor Swift fatigue. Just how powerful is Taylor Swift? Is Travis Kelsey in over his head? Plus, Bob Menendez, is he corrupt or is he just Cuban? And what's the latest with the UAW strike? And mm-hmm. finally, what, what in, in the, the world, world is, is this n- new $499 a month Tinder, Tinder select? select? Cue the intro. Let's find out. I'd like to try to sell awesome. some of you. Okay, I'm going to pee. Pee. Pee, pee. Just doing our vocal warm ups. That's right. Welcome to the 16th iteration of the Pay Pigs podcast. My name is Ben. That's my esteemed colleague, Emil. If you're, DeRosa. Thank you. Uh, be sure to, we're, we're getting right into it, so we're just going to f- fly through this. Subscribe if you don't already. Hit that notification bell. Follow us on everything. We got an updated Patreon thing with all sorts of new Patreon. Um, Go into the uh, description if you want to come see me live uh, doing comedy. We we messed up the link last time. This one will work, I promise. Uh, it's going to be fun. Added be real some, funny. Added some fun stuff. I'll be there heckling him the whole time. When did the joke start? Etc. And I'll be saying stuff like, they started 15 minutes ago, sir. Yeah. And also, uh, the creditcardlist.com is now live. So go there. Sign up for, for, I don't know, there's a bunch of good shit on there. So, Emil. So, Ben. I think the, uh, the, the funniest thing that we should start with is this uh, chat GPT you can talk to right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Let's, let's, take, let's take a gander. For, so, for the, uh, in case you've been living under a rock, you got to say hi to the bugs, first of all. But second of all, the chat GPT that everybody raved about and now nobody talks about anymore because... God knows why. Um, they've now made it like Siri, so you can you can talk to. I don't know why it's not letting me pause the damn thing. They're letting you talk to it now instead of just prompting it with text. Yeah, a bunch of people are pushing it out. The uh, obviously like Sam Sam Altman and and OpenAI are like, we are changing the game. Everything's different now. And but the Wall Street Journal did a big write up about it, and it opens with. Their story, jo- Joanna Stern, I guess she got to futz around with it because it's not out for us yet, but she says, you'll have two reactions to hearing my conversation with the now vocal chat GPT. Number one, holy crap. This is the future of communicating with computers that sci-fi writers promised us. And number two, I'm building an underground bunker and stockpiling toilet, pa- toilet paper and granola bars. That's all you're going to need? I, lady, those toilet... Those granola bars are going to back you up. So, trust me. Uh, should we play a little bit about it, a, l- yeah. a little bit of it, so we can, so people can really go, "Holy crap!" Yeah, let's see if this gives us You're a holy crap. Right holy okay, crap. Okay, let me let me rewind pretend, it here. Pretend I'm your best friend. Ask me how my day was. Thinking. Of course, friend. How was your day? Did anything <laughs> interesting or special happen? I'm here to listen. I was like, can you pause it for one second? Um, I shot a video at work. Oh, you're not allowed to pause it. It doesn't let me pause. Yeah. This isn't crazy making. But so the, if you're an audio listener, there's a... That's cool. It's, it, thinks, <laughs> it, it, it thinks for so long. It's, 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 she asked the question and, and then you see it. It's making thinking. movements and it's thinking. Boy, that makes me just want to stockpile granola bars and mm. toilet paper and go live in a bunker. This this is it, it, yeah. I will say though that it, it hasn't dropped to every. They I guess it's dropping in like two weeks for everybody and uh, or people who pay twenty bucks a month to be a part of Chat GPT Pro. Uh, they said it's going to be faster. It when, better be. I mean seriously. And but also that's not how friends talk to each other. No, not pretend at all. you're my friend. Okay, friend. Well, the worst. Uh, how the, was your day? The worst one was I think I might have sent it to you, but the the woman who does security at um, oh yeah Lillian Wang she's uh, working on AI safety at OpenAI. She said because Sam Altman wrote you know voice mode and vision for Chat GPT really worth a try because you're also now going to be able to just give it images and it's going to be able to 
going to be able to like solve what you want. You can feed it images like, here's my math homework. Hmm. But she said, this is crazy. Lillian Wang said, I just had a quite emotional, personal conversation with ChatGPT in voice mode, talking about stress, work-life balance. Interesting, interestingly, I felt heard and warm. Never tried therapy before. <laughs> Wait, dude. <laughs> really? <laughs> Never she... tried therapy before, but this is probably it. Try it, especially if you usually just use it as a productivity tool. I'm worried about people in, in tech. Holy shit. Wait, I think... Pretend I'm your best friend. Wait, Ask... come on. Where's the thing that pops out? I want to see... Like, imagine doing that and going like, holy shit, I feel emotionally full. I had a real conversation for the first time in my life. I finally told someone about uh, something I've never... Yeah. Well, I, I think it gives an example of what kind of emotional things it can talk about. Here. Really? <laughs> That's fascinating. I'm curious, uh, what angle or perspective did you take on the topic? Was it about how AI and language models work? Or perhaps a demonstration of our interaction? I, I just want to I want to simulate how, what it would be like to be to be that woman and have the have the emotional conversation. So can I play the AI and you be the the woman yeah. having therapy? Because it's obvious that she just kind of. I wish she it, recorded I, her conversation. I would do anything to hear it. Yeah, me too. Because what what information did she give it that made the conversation steer? Because you as the human are naturally going to be steering it toward whatever end you want to. Did she just kind of look around and go, sometimes I think about hurting myself or something. And then she had to wait for the AI to respond with the little bubbles. Really? Wow, that's interesting. That's fascinating. <laughs> In what ways? So, what, well, so, uh, I don't know. I guess I've just been really stressed at work, ChatGPT. Work well, can be oh. stressful sometimes. I know what that's like. As an AI chatbot, I experience my own kind of stress. Oh. But for me, it's different. What kind of stress are you talking about? Well, I think I just worry that maybe uh, we're not making the world a better place and, and maybe the work we're doing is actively making the world a worse place. You're right about that. The world is becoming a worse place <laughs> because of people like you. That's not funny. No, that's <laughs> fucked up. Ben. I don't think that that's nice. Uh, I also think that... Um, yeah, I, I wonder if you can switch the the accent and stuff on it. Like you can, you can, you can change its voice and stuff. Oh wow! But specifically accents, because uh, I know Siri, you can give it like an Australian accent. Here, I had right? it open. Yeah, you can do. You have. Can ju you give it like someone uh, right who, now? You have five choices. Oh geez, Juniper. Well, that tells me nothing. There was a fluffy mama cat named Lila. Okay. Once That's Juniper. Okay. Sky. That one's kind of nice. I mean, these are that one's just are, like you're, you're listening are, to an audio book. Yeah, these are just the voice actors because they they hired voice actors. Gentle, you're gonna have a new playmate soon. Just perked up, curious. Whatever. No, it doesn't sound. It sounds like they're all American for now. I wonder if you can give it like an ESL kind of kind of accent. Someone whose English is a second language. Yeah, like the guy from. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop with all the weapons. Damn, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I just have whiplash from you referencing a movie from 1985. The who? The which guy? With all the weapons? <laughs> which guy? For those of you who don't know, Beverly Hills Cop was a, a great movie, actually, starring Eddie Murphy. It came out in, I think, like 1972. Nobody really knows for sure. Um, but don't worry, Emil's going to send me the clip of the guy speaking. Uh, it sounds like probably something racist, I guess. No, it's not racist at all. Oh, but this is, this is who I would want my chatbot. Oh, this oh. is what I would want my chatbot to sound like. Okay, here we go. I bet there's an app. Yep, great. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> the art gallery is completely bankrupt in the toilet. Why? Because we had an owner who was obstinate and stupid and ignorant. You shot. He reminds me of you, Dylan. <laughs> Interesting. Can remember? I don't know oh, what to make of that. <laughs> well, just like a character that you could play. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. We got a, our first ad, but it's just. Wait, we got to do it like we usually do it.
We'd like to thank our. We'd like to thank another sponsor of. There's a fly. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. It's our. It's our own ad, so we're thanking ourselves. Yeah, we're we're sponsor. We're not paying to sponsor ourselves, but, but we're, we would like to thank the sponsor. We'd like to thank our sp- sponsor, us. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We'd like to thank another sponsor of today's episode. The credit card list dot com. com. You guys had asked for so long for this website and we finally made it. So you can get yourself one of these bad boys. You know, Emil, I recently went to Europe and you know how I paid for it? I paid for the flight. With, with money? With my American Express points. Oh my God. That's exactly That's right. That's crazy. And you can get more than one card. This gold card is legitimately my favorite card. I use it every single day. Because I get, I believe, two, two, three for one, four for one. I believe it's four points for every dollar spent at restaurants, gas stations. Uh, it might be three for one. And then I believe like two for one uh, on every other purchase. It's, it's great. And then on top of that, so there's a $250 annual fee, which sounds like it sucks. That but, sounds like a lot of money for... But every month you get a $10 Grubhub credit. So that's $120 a year. Plus, you get a $10 a month Uber Eats credit or just Uber. It's just Uber credit. I use Uber every month. Which amounts, to, and I believe you get a bonus uh, $25 in December. So that's uh, $150 um, value per year, which essentially offsets the entire annual fee, which is what I tell people. It is my favorite card because. American Express points are incredibly valuable, and it comes with a sign-up bonus of, I believe, 60,000 points when you spend like three grand in the first three months. You'll see. Just go to the creditcardlist.com. I think it's four grand in the first three months. Four grand in the first three months. Doable pretty, yeah, yeah. for a lot of people. Or And if you can't, just you know, have your mom or your dad or your brother or your friend help you. Wait, Ben, um, I have to tell you something. What? I also went to Europe this summer. And how did you do it? Did you use points? Did you use your Amex points? I used Amex points and Chase Rewards points. There you go. And Chase is going to be one of the ones that we add on there pretty soon. Because that's my favorite card. And I'm going to talk all about it when we get it on there. We also have the, uh, if you're into like cash back, I know a lot of people. But I also have both. I have a lot. I have. We'll talk about it. I have so many cards. But go to the website, see what appeals to you. There's some good um, Capital One Cashback cards. There's plenty of ones with uh, zero zero dollar annual fees. It's great, and we're going to be adding more on there as we go. But uh, also, we are going to be doing a couple standalone videos soon about about credit card. Just everything you need to know, and I've always wanted to know about how credit scores are. Calculated. Everything you were too afraid to ask. Yes, everything you were too afraid to ask, but now you can know because we, your fearless credit card connoisseurs, are here to answer all your questions. Anyway, that's enough. Thank Back you to, to our show. sponsors. Um, Thank you to us. Thank look you, for the link in our description. Yeah, it's there. Or the creditcardlist.com. It's oh, not yeah. that hard. But you can also click the link in the yeah. description. And if, you, if you're there, click the link and get a ticket to my show. I'll see you there. Let's get into the, the real news, shall we? I did we? just cancel my, my pro subscription. And now I'm like, should I get it back? No, I don't think you should. I don't think I should either. Also, just as a quick aside, OpenAI just um, did a funding round valuing it at just under $100 billion, which is surprising because I would think that it'd be worth more than that, but I guess not. That's going to last. Oh, for sure it's going to last. Uh, so Taylor Swift. This is what you really want to talk what about. You really, this is what I really want to talk about because You're obsessed. I, I am obsessed. Would um, you call yourself a Swifty? No. I, I I like a couple of her songs, but I I definitely don't I don't um, consider myself a Swifty. But she's fucking this football player named Travis Kelsey. Are you saying she's fucking this football? Fo- yeah, she's fucking him for sure. We don't know. We have no sex. idea. But we know that they've had sex. I don't know if that's. He might not have premarital sex. Dude. He might not. Give me a break, you guys. Give me a break. I have no idea if they've had sex. Also, he's like six foot five to her five foot eleven, five foot ten. So that's a good match. They're gonna watch. They have a kid that's just like not into music or sports. They'd be so disappointed. They have a gamer child. <laughs> but they might be open minded. Yeah, maybe they don't need to force their kid to. Do yeah, what they do. I don't think they'll raise him anyway. Probably not. <laughs> but. Man, this <laughs> they're gonna have a baby who's into uh, Caribbean food and uh... <laughs> what? 
Are you inferring a Colin Hanks or what's the other one's name? Chet Hanks? No, but like she she lives in New York and like often on the Upper West Side, you'll have like a Caribbean nanny or a. Uh, oh, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Got it. Man, that was two Just, degrees yeah, sorry. way away from me. That was for all my New Yorkers out there. Yeah. So they, they're, he invited her to watch him play football. Who's he? Travis Kelsey. Because I just learned who this guy was. Oh, man. He, his name is Travis Kelsey. Yeah, now he I know. He plays on the... Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. Two first names. Yeah. Well, Kelsey is spelled K-E-L-C-E. Yeah. <laughs> Usually the two first names works when it's... Two of the same gender, right? Never seen that. Yeah. Really? Oh, well. Well, Kelsey can be a man's name. Kelsey Grammer. That's ex- Fuck. God. I'm so fucking. glad I brought this up. Do you remember, um, do you remember the Nelly song, Country Grammar? Of course I do. I'll have to dig it up. I did a, uh, I did like a Weird Al style spoof called Kelsey Grammar, and it was all just a rap about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. You got to find that. You got to find that. <laughs> it's all just like a rap about Frasier and, you know, Toss Salad toss and Scramble X. Also, speaking of me almost slamming my forehead for the audio listener, I've been doing that lately just as like a bit. And I went to this restaurant with my girlfriend over the weekend and they were closed. Weird flex. I went to Checker Hall and we showed up and there's, it's also, it doubles as a venue. And uh, we we got there and the guy said, oh yeah, Checker Hall is closed for renovations. And I just slammed my open palm on my forehead and I said, <laughs> Stupid, stupid. And he just kind of looked at me. <laughs> we can the walk. Uh, I don't know why I did that. But uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. It is so good. That, that, that chicken. What's the chicken? The, the, the schnitzel. The schnitzel is so fucking good. And we're, we're getting off topic here. I did not tell the story. Taylor Swift <laughs> is, went to the football game and it, it was like, the, it, it's just exhausting, man. I'm just tired of it. She could, she could, you know what? It's like the, it's like some kind of um, Donald Trump thing where Donald Trump said he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and people would still vote for him. Taylor Swift could pull down her pants and take a big fat dump on national TV and Swift fans would, I mean, they would swarm it and just try to grab the shit. They would, they, they would. She she does have a hold on. Uh, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I I'm not interested in this stuff at all. It's just everywhere. The uh, well, there's my this... feed is. I'm I don't like football or Taylor Swift. Man, that's so cool. And my whole shit is just. Well, did, there there was this uh, there's this Taylor Swift fan account, and they this is how absurd it is. Oh, the seemingly ranch. Yeah, thing? Taylor Swift was eating a piece of chicken with ketchup and seemingly ranch. Clearly written by like some Chinese person working at like a social media mill in somewhere, somewhere far off. Just one of those people who's just like, fuck, I got to write about fucking celebrities. for this. Wait, you know what's my favorite Taylor Swift account? What? The one, let me find it. Oh, and of course, KFC replied, our ranch queen. <laughs> uh, and then Arby's had to make their own fucking thing. And uh, it's just a pathetic piece of chicken next to a pathetic little thing of ketchup and ranch. And it says... When the function has Arby's boneless wings with ketchup and seemingly ranch, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just reached its, and, and so here, here's this Taylor woman Swift talking also. So unbelievable. And the reason why we're all so excited about it is because I can only equate it to what it's like being a theater girly. When you're in, when so you're a th- She's explaining why everybody's captivated by this. By, by Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift fucking the football, football man. everybody. Yeah, everybody. Theater kid or you're in theater I mean, school, you to be fair, even like the NFL from their main account on Instagram or whatever, put the like Taylor was here. Oh, on, yeah. Because they know that that's what I'm talking about. Her, her, she's got her own gravitational pull. And yeah, we it, didn't it, cover it when it was ha- like when all the, when all the news was coming out. Oh, sorry. I don't want to cut off your. No, no. Well, well, this girl equates it to here. Date in your circle and you date these narcissistic, like skinny, twinkie boys who chain smoke cigarettes and have their pick of any okay, beautiful that girl. Hot. Yeah. Because they're the token straight guy. I'm best and mate. they treat you like <laughs> SHIT. And then one day you date outside your circle and you meet a nice Midwestern Ohio football playing boy who worships the ground you walk on and all of your friends are like, thank you, thank God. That's exactly what it is, except it's on the biggest scale in the world. And it- 
I do love how all of a sudden I love the we, I love this hint. We've this come hint. we've come full circle on jocks. They are like now not toxic. <laughs> and they're like since I mean I don't know anything about this guy Travis Kelsey, but I doubt it's I don't know. They're acting as as if he's like some kind of saint. Well, he's fucked. Why? Because he he either has to marry her now or he's just going to be as much as everybody loves him right now, all the Swifties and shit. They don't, though. That's the thing. No one's good enough for Taylor. They're all already... No, like, they already love him. No. Really? They're, they're literally like pulling clips of him from practice and being like, I don't know. He seems a little aggressive. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, That's what I'm saying. He's, he's fucked. He's oh, fucked. But that, that's what's so... Like, they, the, this fandom is so unhinged yeah. and... They've gotten to a point where, yeah, like they, it doesn't matter who she dates. It's like, I don't know. He seems a little aggro. Yeah. I feel bad for, well, the Kansas City Chiefs whipped the the ass of the Chicago Bears. Yeah. And I feel bad for whatever player on the Bears invited his crush to come watch the game. And it's just like, you just get fucking overshadowed by Taylor Swift. Or some other guy on the Chiefs might have been like, hey, babe, you know, come come to the game and watch me play. And then they, it's just nobody cares. Hey, but that's nice. You fly under the radar. You go, don't worry that's about that. We got our own little secret thing. We should invite some celebrity crushes to come watch to, us come podcast. Watch this? Yeah. I'll invite Taylor Swift right now. Yeah, invite invite Taylor Swift. I don't have a huge thing for Taylor Swift. I don't know. Really? Don't come. Well, if you want to come, I'd like to talk to her. She seems nice. I have um I, I put in my notes D S to watch us. Who's D S? Why why did I put that? I Donna Summers. That <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> Is Wait, that, who the fuck? Donna Summer? DS. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump? <laughs> uh, DS? DS. Oh, we want to get a Nintendo DS. No, <laughs> we don't. We don't want Nintendo DS to come watch us. Wait, but I, I do. I, I have to appreciate the. I like that he put it out in the world, and then you know he. So he went to the. He went to her concert apparently, mm-hmm. and. He was very open. I think him and his brother have a podcast. Yeah. And he was very open about the fact that he did not get to say hi to her Mm -hmm. because he wanted to say hi to her. And he was putting it out in the world. And then all of a sudden. Man, he made it happen. He made it happen. He made it happen for himself. It's Really beautiful. Yeah. She, as much power as she wields, I do have to hand it to her. She's using her influence for for a good thing. She just got 35,000 young people to register to vote. Okay. By posting it on her story. The she bad said, thing, it's a lot of young Trump voters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am curious. Uh, I am curious if she's going to eventually run for public office. I could see oh, that no happening. Way. She cares about... No, she does it. Yes, she does. Oh, yeah. You didn't watch the documentary. See, I watched the I did the watch docu- the documentary. You did? Yeah, well, no. I saw the clip on Twitter where she like... <clears throat> okay. You got to watch it. She cares. She had she made it a big deal when she finally came out and took a position against was it Donald Trump or abortion? It might have been both. Did not, you watch not, the doc? I, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I just don't remember what the name of it was or how much of it I watched. But I remember watching it and being like, "She's all right in my book. She's okay." Interesting. She's seemingly ranch to me, <laughs> but I do think uh, I do think she's gonna. When when she can affect a local economy, why would she want that? Why would she want that? Because she's gonna, because she's gonna want the next big thing. Why do all these people get into politics? Because they have a lust for power. Yeah, they're sicko. She's gonna. She's a sicko. She's gonna. I don't have think a she lust is a sicko. I, I also feel, ba- and that's the thing. I feel bad even talking about this stuff because I think she said in the past, like, I don't like this. I don't like everyone commenting on my private life. I don't like. I mean, when. Sophie Turner, who's mm-hmm. also in the news because of her whole jo- Joe Jonas thing. Who, who is she? She's an actress. She was on Game of Thrones. Guy. Uh, uh. And someone posted a video, like a video of them coming out of it was like her, Taylor Swift, Heim, Haim, Heim, Haim, Haim, Haim. All Heim. three of them. Heim. Yeah. Heim. Well, Heim. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. And ju- it, it made me sick. Like they just all. It's just like. Yeah, it sucks. They, they can't even go to dinner. But, so, I don't know. She does, She seems to, like, have a... I'm sure she's in a very lonely place. 
Yeah, and we all know. Did you see? Britney's- and you can't even like go on a date with someone without jackasses like us being like, "Better get married to Travis Kelsey." See, look, I don't, I don't like it either. It's just that it, that's why I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. Like, can we all just fucking relax for a minute? Well, yeah, but Taylor so the- Swift. Man, she shits every day, hopefully, just like the rest of us. She's just- actually pretty backed up. I do talk to her about that. Uh, <laughs> and I think she'd kill for every day. Uh, no, but <clears throat> we did want to talk about, because uh, they were doing the they were doing the estimates around her tour and everything, yeah. and just how crazy it is. So this mm-hmm. is from time. Because it's not just this cultural impact. She has, um, you know, there's a it's whole- It's an economic impact, for sure. Yeah, there's a whole sure. Taylor Swift economy. Analysts estimate that the era's tour will likely surpass the $1 billion mark next March while she's in, she's touring internationally. If this projection holds true. She will achieve the milestone of the biggest tour in music history, surpassing Elton John's multi-year farewell tour, which wrapped up earlier this summer, holds the current record of $939 million. Jesus Christ. And then it's going to continue for another seven months before con- concluding in November 2024 in Toronto. That is, unless rumors that Swift will release more dates come to fruition. But it's not just that. It's not just that she's getting it from the <clears throat> from her concert, concerts, all right? The money goes far deeper than just net profits. The Ares Tour is projected to generate close to $5 billion in consumer spending in the United States alone. Jesus. I know. If Taylor Swift were an economy, she'd be bigger than 50 countries, uh, said Dan Fleetwood, president of Question Pro Research and Insights. On the opening night in Glendale, Arizona, the concert brought in more revenue for local businesses than the Super Bowl. Wow. To use that event as comparison, Swift has been performing the equivalent of two to three Super Bowls every weekend for the past five months. Jesus Christ. Isn't that nuts? Dylan was saying before the show that she should start her own uh, burger chain. Yeah, I think what's next for Taylor Swift is burgers. Burgers or chocolate, right? Burgers, chocolate, Mr. Beast. Mr. Beef style. Burgers, chocolate, Mr. Beast. (laughs) Burgers, chocolate, Mr. Beast. It should be a, a burger, chocolate... Chain combo. Combo. It's not really what I think, though. What? What do you mean? Oh, you really don't think she should do that? <laughs> yeah. No, oh. I don't. She, she should, should do, do like a hot dogs. Milkshake. Milkshake? Taylor Swift milkshake. Taylor Swift. <laughs> that seems more on brand. Yeah, I think a Taylor Swift milkshake. <laughs> Taylor Swift milkshake. <laughs> this episode is just called Taylor Swift milkshake. <laughs> No, but so uh, every one hundred dollars spent on live performance generates an estimated three hundred dollars in ancillary local spending on things like hotels, food, and transportation. And some cities are saying that like they she single handedly revived their like tourism economy. Wow. The Illinois governor credited the musician with um with helping the, with helping them after her three nights in Chicago. She was even mentioned in a report by the Fed crediting her with fueling the national tourism industry. Damn, I love ancillary spending. My favorite kind of spending. Places are running out of beads. Beads? Oh, for the... F- for the friendship, friendship bracelets? Friendship bracelets? Yeah. They mine it in Africa. Beads. No, I don't think that's... <laughs> conflict-free beads. Yeah, conflict-free beads. Taylor! Speaking of conflict, man, you know, you know uh, it's been a cruel summer for, um, for, for Bob Menendez. Bob Menendez. For those of you who don't know him, Bob Menendez is the... Here's the thing. He's a he's a disgraced he's a disgraced nah, see, you're senator getting, from New Jersey. You're getting that from the lame. your home state. You're man. That what, do you, the, what do you have to say for this man? You're getting that from the lame. You, you speak for him. Well, I, I keep trying, and you just keep. <laughs> Sorry. Well, why don't you say something? <laughs> you you're getting all this from the lamestream media is what is what the problem is, right? Mm. And they don't they're just trying to take down another New Jersey king. You sound like Charlie Kirk from Toilet Paper USA. Do you know I? what he said? What did he Char- say? Charlie Kirk, if you don't know who Charlie Kirk is, you're blessed. He's a he's a right-wing, up-and-coming right-wing. He's like, think of a junior Tucker Carlson, this guy. Uh, he says it's all a ruse to create the appearance of impartiality so that they can continue their jihad against Donald Trump. Everything is a conspiracy, even when the, the even when the Democrats uh, hold no, one of their more, own to account. This is more anti-New Jersey hate, uh, the, and this is... This all proves that the anti-New Jersey sentiment in this country has gotten out of control. Even New Jersey's own governor said that he should step down, though. He's a rat. That's Who, the what, governor is? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I do think that this guy's fucking awesome. No, we got it. So, he, like, legitimately, if you're going to do bribes and shit, do it like this guy. There's a lot There's a lot going on here. Uh, I think, honestly, what we really need to talk about is 
how sometimes getting into a relationship with a woman can fuck up your whole shit. Oh man, yeah, he okay. fell in love. Be now, care- now this be- is a this is a love story. <laughs> be careful, I mean, Travis Kelsey. Uh, no, but so if you don't know, by the way, I'm going to insert as many Taylor Swift songs <clears throat> as song titles into this. I've already snuck in two, and you didn't notice. I don't know that many. Yeah, I know. I know, I know the Shake It Off one. Okay, yeah. We got Cruel Summer, love story. Should I play the video of him like singing for his wife? Girlfriend? Yeah, oh, well, so let's just so Bob Menendez, he's been like a career politician. He started. <laughs> Sorry, there was a bug. Uh, b- starting off in like city councils in New Jersey, he was eventually the mayor of Union City in New Jersey. Then, did you know who he was, by the way, before all this? Uh, I've like heard the name a bunch, but I didn't know. And I remember when he was, we'll talk about, he was, he's had some corruption charges before. That's right. Um, Which were dismissed. They were not dismissed. They were, uh, it was a hung jury. That's right. That's right. Um, they all had huge cocks. <laughs> <laughs> then he was a member of the state legislature. Then he was elected to the House of Representatives. And then he was appointed to the Senate and then eventually won election to the Senate. Um, <clears throat> and his wife he met in around 2008 nadine menendez they did not get married until like a decade later but they met in an ihop that's romantic yeah and uh you know they fell in love they got married recently and yeah do you want to play the video of her uh, this is this is a video of senator uh, robert menendez so for the audio listener i'm going to paint a picture He's a white looking guy. He's wearing a blue polo and um, his wife, who's very lovely, um, is sitting on a, a bench and he is behind her like uh, with with one leg up and he's got her shoulders in his hands and they're in front of the fucking Taj Mahal and he's singing to her. This was their engagement video on their personal YouTube channel. Yeah, no uh, less. Rob, Robert and Nadine. This yes. is a man clearly lost in the sauce. <clears throat> he loves her. He loves his wife. Just singing like shit. People are around them just taking photos. Whoever's filming is just kind of trying to capture it. Oh, Babu. Oh, my God. So romantic. He'd be, he be like, you belong with me. That's what he's saying. All right. So, look. <clears throat> this guy's no... What? What's this? Nothing. Oh, th- you did a Taylor Swift thing? I think. <laughs> this guy's clearly no saint, all right? And, right? and in 2015, he had, he, had, uh, he had other corruption charges, but they were like... <clears throat> They were like quaint corruption charges. You know what I mean? It was the it was the ones you see. It was he was taking kickbacks from a from an eye doctor in New Jersey. Some some vacations. Some, what did the eye doctor need? Who knows? What's the matter? You can't you can't you can't take a friend to the Caribbean. Get some kickbacks. Maybe get a maybe get your license uh, renewed. Your eye doctor license? Yeah, I guess. So, Shit. <clears throat> and that ended up. There was a hung jury. They couldn't get um, they couldn't get a unanimous vote right. on the guilt of Robert Menendez, so it ended in a mistrial. But he said, "Hey, you know what? We're getting back to business, running for re-election, going back to the Senate." Then he ends up with Nadine. All right, and this is when it all goes to shit. Because <laughs> depending on your perspective, I think it's awesome. I think they <laughs> they made some good decisions. Because what else is holding high office for if not for enriching yourself and helping out your buddy? And hel- yeah, helping out Nadine's buddy. She's got some. Yeah. So that's the th- it. It centers around. Um. It centers. It centers around Robert Menendez, Nadine Menendez, and then there are three, uh, three businessmen and some officials from the Egyptian government. The the businessmen are Will, Hannah, Jose Uribe, and Fred Daibes. If I'm messing up those names. Oh, you're so butchering sorry. them. Um. <clears throat> and that's when you start getting. We should honestly read from the indictment. It is. Nuts. Okay. Well, so he's he's being accused of using his position to influence criminal investigations of two New Jersey businessmen, one of whom was a longtime fundraiser for Menendez, and then he also is accused of uh, 
just doing some backroom dealings to to ensure that Egypt continues to get the a little over a billion dollars a year in aid that they have been promised since the 70s a deal with with uh Israel and the United States and Egypt was recently concerned because they were starting to get less than than it was starting to look like the money was slowing down a bit and they have this you know they've got <clears throat> It was They've got down. their and, guy. Yeah. In, 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 so this is from the indictment. For at least several years prior to 2018, despite its strategically important relationship with the U.S. and the Middle East, Egypt has, had often faced resistance in obtaining foreign military financing and foreign military sales. For example, in or about August 2017, the State Department announced that it was withholding $195 million in foreign military financing until Egypt could demonstrate improvements on human rights and democracy and was canceling an additional... $65.7 million in foreign military financing to Egypt. In or about early 2018, multiple U.S. senators had raised human rights or rule of law objections to foreign military financing to Egypt and no foreign military sales of offensive military equipment to Egypt requiring congressional notification had been concluded since on or about March 2016. Okay, so no more is coming in until Egypt gets their act together. Right. And then here comes... Mr. Hanna. <laughs> Robert Menendez and Nadine Menendez. Okay. The defendants begin dating. Will Hanna, the defendant, and Nadine Menendez arranged a series of meetings and dinners with Menendez paid for by Hanna or his associates, at which Egyptian officials raised, among other things, requests related to foreign military sales and foreign military financing. In exchange for Menendez's and Nadine Menendez's, Menendez's promise that Menendez would, among other things, use his power and authority to fa facilitate such sales and financing to Egypt, Hannah promised, among other things, to put Nadine Menendez on the payroll of his company in a low or no-show job. Awesome. So she gets nothing for being essentially a middleman. No, she doesn't get nothing. Well, she... Or, sorry. She, <laughs> she gets money. In exchange for yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah. virtually nothing, she gets a, a ton of money. Also, uh, Menendez... Ms. Menendez... Uh, what's her name? Nadine. Nadine. Nadine, at one point, bragged that uh, it would make this guy, Mr. Hanna, more powerful than the president of Egypt. Right. <clears throat> so that's where I was talking about, like, because a lot of people covering this are focusing on the, uh, all of the things they found in their home, which we're going to get to. It's insane. But not a lot of people are talking about what exactly they were doing yeah. for this money. And I think, like, uh, who, was the, who was the Supreme Court uh, Justice Thomas when it came out, you know, it was the same, it was a similar thing. A lot of gifts, a lot of, um, a lot of bribes and, but this is just crazy. You're talking, I mean, and they have texts from these people where it's like, uh, so one of them was, he was giving them information that. Uh, like uh, private information about state department. Yes. People. So yeah. Menendez and Nadine Menendez again met with Hannah on, you know, May 6, 2018. Later that same day, <coughs> Menendez sought from the state department, non-public information regarding the number and nationality of persons serving at the U S embassy in Cairo, Egypt. And he just texted it to his wife yeah. to send to this Mr. Hannah So he guy. sends to Nadine Menendez, just FYI. And they've blanked it out because they don't want to give away the number. Blank amount of Americans, combination of diplomats, commercial service, USAID, other blank Egyptians, locally employed staff. This is what's at American Embassy. Insane text. Summary of ratio. We don't have it. They took it away. Are Egyptians working at Embassy? So this Mr. Hanna guy, he's basically the he is basically the middleman between the Egyptian officials and the Menendez couple. And what's his endgame in all this, you might ask? Well, so yeah, that's the, so he's. That's my favorite part. He's um cuz it's he's not what you would expect. He's the go between here. And so after those messages, he sent a uh <clears throat> he sent a message to the Egyptian official. The ban on small arms and munitions and ammunition to Egypt has been lifted. This means sales can begin. That will include sniper rifles among our other articles. Yeah, and so they're doing all this but money's not coming in. Right. And right? Nadine's pissed off. Nadine's really fucking pissed. Uh, and and like it's getting crazy. Menendez, uh, a senator, is ghostwriting and editing letters on behalf of Egypt, seeking to convince other U.S. senators to release a hold on three hundred million dollars in aid to Egypt. Okay, awesome. he sent his ghostwritten letter to Nadine Menendez from his personal email account, and then Nadine forwarded the ghostwritten letter to Hannah, facilitating Hannah's conveyance of the revised draft back to Egyptian officials. Uh, <clears throat> it's, also, by the way. 
the sex that he and Nadine must have been having was probably so fucking hot because here they are just doing their own secret um, kind of uh, like international espionage type shit. Oh, They're it's getting gotta, a ton of money. Got to be very hot. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, with texts like this, I and the mean, way that he's singing to her in front of the Taj Mahal, they're just on top of the world. They feel like nobody's looking at fucking Egypt. This is this is uh these are pennies in the we want. T- leave a penny, take a penny jar. Nobody's paying attention to this. We're just skimming a little off the top. But I'm I I'm obs- I love when they pull the texts. Uh, so you know, they're telling Egyptian officials it's all going to be good. Uh, and then Menendez texts his wife Nadine. Tell Will. I'm going to sign off on this sale to Egypt today. 46,120 millimeter target practice rounds and 10,000 rounds tank ammunition, $99 million. Note, these tank rounds are for tanks they have had for many years. They're using these in the Sinai for the counterterrorism campaign. This is insane. I want to I want to tell people what what Hannah's Will Hannah's end goal is. Egyptian official 1 replied with a thumbs up emoji. He did. <laughs> Well, yeah, okay, so all this is going on. Bob's making good on his promises, right? He's delivering yes. fucking arms. He's getting the money back for all this shit, right? Yes. And what's Will Hanna doing? He Nothing. starts, well, not but, until... Yeah, so he's... Okay. W- in 2019, he started operating his company, ISEG Halal. And within a year, the Egyptian government hands him his little bribe, which is he wanted to be the sole entity entity authorized to certify that halal meat imported to Egypt from anywhere in the world had been prepared according to Islamic law. That's all he wanted. He just wanted to be, I want to be the only guy who can certify that this well, meat he needed is halal. A way to, he needed some revenue coming in. Yeah, and he needed so, probably a way to launder his shit. Between 2018 or 2019, no revenue coming into uh, to ISEG halal. And then he is gifted with being the sole uh, halal certifier. <laughs> yeah. Inshallah, he will become the the sole certifier of halal meat imported from Egypt. And he gets a little he gets a little high on the horse when he gets his exclusive monopoly of being. Um, That's right. There were some there were some uh, insiders at the Department of Agriculture well, well, who so wait, were before, concerned, and Menendez told him to fuck off. Yeah, but before we get that, he, he's so. After several months of non-payment following the initial March 2018 meeting described in paragraph 12a above, which we were just reading, uh, Nadine complained to multiple associates that Will had been failing to pay her and caused at least one of them to believe that Robert Menendez, the defendant, would cease acting for Hannah's benefit and at his request, including with respect to Egypt, unless Hannah came through on his promises and paid her. Nadine Menendez also complained directly to Menendez about Hannah's as yet unfulfilled promises writing i've been so upset all morning i am will, so upset she will wrote. left for egypt yesterday supposedly and now he thinks he's king of the world and both countries wrapped up around his pinky i really hope they replace him just the little king of halal they made a little prince and now they've got to deal with it so when they were searching uh nadine and robert's home they found five hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash they found uh, most of it hidden in clothing, in closets, and a safe. Some of the cash was stuffed in envelopes that contained the fingerprints or DNA of one of these other businessmen. And they also found $100,000 worth of gold bars. They also found in his Google searches, right after one of his trips to Egypt, how much, how is, much a is a kilo, kilo of, of gold, gold worth? worth? God, these people are fucking awesome. I love, I just love the stupidity and the... The uh, cocksuredness, if that's a phrase, of these uh, of these type of people. Right. It's so, awesome. While this is all going on, Nadine starts her own company. She starts Strategic International Business Consultants. Ooh, yeah. And she's bragging about how she every time mm. she uh, gets one of these deals going, mm-hmm. she's getting a little piece, all right? Hell yeah. When sending a relative information about the information of her company, she stated by text, every time I'm a middle person for a deal, I'm asking to get paid, and this is my consulting company. Mm. Oh, yeah, baby. Man, we love it. But as you were saying, so what happened with this uh, halal company? He ended up having an actual impact on, on, uh, on meat and driving up the price of meat. The, UN, you, the, the Department of Agriculture had to step in and contact the government of Egypt and saying, you guys need to break up this monopoly. Uh, you know, this halal guy is causing a ruckus. But now this allows him to, uh, you know, to, to, to give... Bob Menendez, all these all these payments they're looking for. 
my favorite part. So Menendez is now busted. He's got all this cash in his house, which is kind of the smoking gun for all of this, including and especially the text messages, the Google searches, all that shit. Well, don't forget the DNA that's all over the DNA. Cache. I mean, it's an open and shut case. No, no, the DNA not from Menendez, right? From, from the yeah, 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 from the other businessman. But he goes in in front of all the cameras in the in the news the other day, and he says. This is, this is his explanation for why he hid thousands of dollars in cash at his home. Here we go. For 30 years, I have withdrawn thousands of dollars in cash from my personal savings account, which I have kept for emergencies and because of the history of my family facing confiscation in Cuba. That checks out to me, honestly. Yeah. Old-fashioned. But these were monies drawn from my personal savings account based gotcha. on the income that I have lawfully derived over those 30 years. So it's just because he's Cuban and, and he comes, even though he was born in, in uh, well, was he born in Cuba? I think he was. And then they came over here when he was like a, a young uh, lad. I think they came over before Castro. I don't remember. Either way. I don't know how old he is. Cubans famously don't trust the government nor banks. Are you able to pull up? I love the pictures. The, um, he had them like stuffed in jackets on his, uh, and then does, with his name on it. Let's see. Yeah, that's the that is my favorite part also that <laughs> that they had. It's just that his name on the jacket with with the cash. Yeah, I mean it really doesn't get any funnier. But it's, so and also it wasn't just it wasn't just the uh military aid and and the halal monopoly. He was also um they were also asking him to put pressure on on prosecutors who were coming after his associates. Of course. Yeah. He's got uh, he's got And a, that was for for that was a big payday. They got a new Mercedes Benz convertible. Didn't they get more some than mortgage payments taken? Oh taken yeah. Care of? She yeah. was she was about twenty three thousand dollars behind on her mortgage. Oh my God. All of a sudden that disappears. I gotta start looking into some corruption. I wanna see who's who's uh whose back I can scratch, you know? Someone here in the city council, LA city council, I'm sure somebody needs some kind of back scratching. It's also embarrassing. After the purchase was complete, Nadine Menendez messaged Bob Menendez. Congratulations, mon amour de la vie. We are the proud owners of a 2019 Mercedes. Heart emoji. Later that day. (laughs) Was it an S class? At least. It's this one. Oh, that looks like shit. That's not even a good looking Mercedes. That's yeah. It's got like the um. It's a, It's worth over sixty grand. Later that day. Later that day, after Urube, Urube, uh, Uribe Uribe asked her, "Are you happy?" Nadine Menendez responded, "I will never forget this." And later texted a photo of the Mercedes Benz convertible, which is below. Wow, man. Oh man. Well, he's definitely going to need to shake it off after this. I think because that's that's a lot of evidence I got going that one. against him. What? what are you I got that one. Huh. No, but this is the thing, you know. Uh, they're, they're, they're coming. They're coming at him so hard. Everyone thinks these are smoking guns, but I, I believe him. You know, what I mean? you're, you're, you're taking out some savings in case things go wrong. This guy's. I believe him too. This guy's in on uh, government dealings. Um, just, oh, also by the way, he was on uh, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, head of the Senate for Foreign Relations Committee, taking taking bribes for. Um, <clears throat> he stepped down from that. Oh, good. Yeah, because he legally had to. Right. But he's not stepping down as senator. But I think it's pretty easy to explain that uh, DNA all over the money. I mean, if you had four hundred grand in your house, wouldn't you let your homies fucking handle it? Yeah, I would. Come check out this. Come ja- check out. Come check out this jacket stuffed with cash. Yo, reach inside that jacket. Hold that. That's a yeah. hundred grand, baby. Isn't that crazy? You're not gonna show your buddies gold bars. <laughs> I would. You're not gonna let your buddies touch your gold bars, and they're not gonna believe how much it's worth. Truly, so you're gonna, you're gonna, Google, gonna Google, Google it right it. in front of them. How much is a kilo of gold? And they're going to go, there's no way you have 120 grand in gold right here. And you go, oh my, let me Google it. Yeah, let me show you. And now you guys think you got them dead to rights. Yeah. A New Jersey king can't, uh, can't get away with anything. Man, well, speaking of, uh, speaking of the government, Joe Biden just went today. Today for us, two days ago for you guys, he just went where no president has gone before. Not the moon, <laughs> if you're thinking that, no. He is fearless, has the- truly. Has the president been on the moon? Yeah, no, no president has ever been on the moon, to 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 my knowledge. But he went and picketed with the UAW workers 
in, I think it was Michigan. Yes. Yeah. And when asked if the workers should get the 40% raise that they're asking for, he said yes. And he also told them to stick with it to, to keep up the, the protest. Yeah. So this which is I found a, very interesting. Joe Biden is a, he's a frustrating character, right? He's, he's been claiming for a while that he's the most pro labor president that we've had in decades, which honestly might be true, but the bar is kind of on the floor. Yeah. Uh, truly. You know, but his NLRB has been, um, a, a welcome. What is the NLRB? The national labor, the national labor relations board. Mm. Uh, but then you have things like the, which we covered previously, like the, the, the rail worker strike, which he squashed. Right. And, but now you have him, standing with labor being the first president to walk the picket line this has you know ruffled the feathers of a lot of people it was i think obama's fucking um obama's auto industry the the former the former head of president obama's auto industry task force said for him to be going on a picket line is outrageous there's no president for it the tradition of the president is to stay neutral so this is pissing a lot of people off in a good way. Like, fuck these fuck people. I'm sure yeah, this guy went dick. to go work for <laughs> like a, whatever. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I'm obviously all for it. I think it's, I think it's great that you have uh, both him and Trump who will, uh, are the presumptive nominees of the Republican and Democrat party are courting labor, which has been not the case for a very long time. Um, and yeah, also, I mean, he's still just, did you watch any of him like giving speeches? I didn't need to. I, I, it's too painful. I can't watch him talk. <laughs> he kept it together for, he, you know, he's got the bullhorn, stalking everyone, pumping him up. And then it's just like, I, I don't know how he does it. He can turn himself on for like just a little bit. But then as soon as he's done, he just kind of does the, he puts the bullhorn down and he's just, and his handlers have to. Well, be, it's confusing. <laughs> Where do you go from there? Where do you step? What's interesting to me is that next week Trump is going to go speak to auto workers in Michigan, um, and he's, I guess, going to be making the case that the push for electric vehicles and not corporate profits is what's hurting workers, uh, which is really going to piss people off because their whole thing is, yeah, it's corporate profits. It's not electric vehicles that are to blame. It's the fucking companies. Right. I think uh, I think Biden, even in a tweet or at the thing, reiterated Sean Fain, the president of the UAW's whole rally cry, which is record profits for a record. Con yeah. Record profits mean a record contract. And the, the reason that this is a big deal is because presidents have been, um, they usually are prone to uh, solidarity with the companies. And like in, and I didn't know this, but in 1894, Grover, oh, Grover, Cleveland. Grover Cleveland sent 2000 federal troops to Chicago to break a railroad strike. I mean, that's, Usually, I mean, remember who was it we were talking about with the? Uh, oh, it was the UPS worker strike because the head of the Teamsters, he was he was telling Joe Biden to basically stay away because usually that's what you know when Joe Biden the the Biden administration stepped in with the rail worker strike they basically made the whole thing go away uh, when at that point the rail workers had all the power and so when UPS was negotiating or when UPS workers were negotiating their new contract, the head of the team service was like, please do not step in. Yeah. We they they we knew he was trouble. We don't need your help. Yeah. They knew so he was trouble. Him stepping in and endorsing the, the worker struggle is, uh, is huge. And a, a big thing, a big thing the that the, the people against the striking workers are, try to say is that it could hurt the economy, but, the evidence points to the contrary. There was, uh, there's this guy, what's his name? Uh, Harley Shaken, a professor em emeritus at the University of California, Berkeley, uh, said that in the 20th century, workers in general and auto workers in particular entered the middle class because of major strikes. These strikes, each in their own time, were portrayed as destroying the economic fabric of the country at the time. He cites the uh, sit-down strike of 1936 and 37 against GM and Flint, the strike against Ford on the eve of World War II, and the post-World War II strike against GM that lasted 113 days. But rather than wreck the economy, the 1945 strike laid the foundation for one of the most successful growth periods in U.S. history that carried through until the early 1970s, he said. And his grandfather worked in a Ford factory. 
He said that sacrifice paved the world the road for the middle class, and then ultimately the strikes created uh, wealth that you know high velocity purchasing power that he calls it. Said uh, so when unions win gains, that money courses through the economy, which I certainly agree with. I mean, shit, they got more money, they're going to be spending it on shit. Yeah. They're going to be buying boats and jet skis. <clears throat> and labor is uh, it's front and center right now. There's been the. No, no, continue. Uh, is majorly front and center. Yeah, well, we'd we'd love to. Maybe we'll have to do it next week. But the 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 WGA has reached a preliminary agreement. It right. just has to be ratified by the like eleven thousand members. But we haven't been we haven't seen the details of the right. of the new agreement yet. There but, was a little bit that came out. There was a there was just here. Let me pull it up. But so far, from what I've been seeing people posting they seem stoked about it it seems like yeah. it's going to pass this is from twitter hollywood studios expected to retain retain the right to train ai models based on writers work under terms of a tentative labor agreement between the two sides so that's interesting but then i think that so it sounds like they're going to be able to use ai based on the writer's work but then the writers are going to make like royalties on it but so just back to the uaw i had no idea how big the UAW is. It does not yeah, I include... Told you last, I told you last week. You did? 400,000 people? Yeah, but it, that it doesn't just include auto workers. Oh, yeah. That's how all of... You can... Um, you, like, apply to be a part of the... Right. When you unionize your workplace. Blue Cross... Blah, maybe I do have a fucking brain tumor. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan... The ZF in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which supplies axles to Mercedes-Benz. Com- company called Domestic Marine. Uh, Thom- Bear, which makes polyurethane wheels. West Rock Packaging in Dayton, New Jersey. Uh, and these have all been striking. Detroit Hotel Workers. Uh, yeah. Solidarity, baby. Solidarity, baby. <clears throat> Casino gaming dealers, lawyers, engineers, beer makers, academic researchers. Um they're all part of the uh, of the thing cuz i mean after all as it says they are the united automobile aerospace and agricultural implement workers of america they have 383,000 active dues paying members as of march we're going to unionize this shop they helped in december the all those professors at the U- university of california when the university of california members uh, uh struck stroke struck striked Joke. 48,000 uh, workers on uh, 10 campuses. Yeah. Pretty wild stuff. Well, should we talk about, should we shift gears, so to speak? Yeah. Also, just to note, uh, the WGA has reached a preliminary agreement. SAG has still not. Yeah, SAG uh, is not. But I'm sure it's not going to be far behind. If- yeah. They still got bad blood. SAG and... Um, I know that one. I am PTP. Yeah. Now we got mad. Oh, man. Shit. We forgot to do our ad break. Should we do it now? Yeah, but I mean, maybe we can insert it earlier. We'll insert it. Yeah, let's just do it at the end and we'll insert it. Okay. Well, the other big news is that Tinder has this new thing called Tinder Select. It's $499 fucking dollars a month, man. Worth it. Boy, I I better be getting, I better be getting some kind of, some kind of back rub or something at least. For spit of that kind that's of that's what you want a back rub. Spit of that kind of but yeah, that's all I want. I just want a back rub. I do. It's it's funny because so all right. If you haven't heard, they announced this. It's called Tinder Select, uh, four hundred ninety nine dollars per month, invite only subscription. Invite all only right? for now, right? As part of the premium plan, subscribers can message people they've not matched with, while the most sought after users will see their profiles. Tinder says it only offers the plan to less than 1% of its users it considers extremely active. Okay, so basically the most extremely active people are fucking uh dorks who are who are swiping constantly. No, it's yeah, it's going to be you're AKA gonna, the guys that you don't want messaging <laughs> right. you. Guys or girls that you don't want messaging you and that's part of the thing is they will let you Message people that you haven't uh, matched with. However, full blown sex pests. However, can now message you. No, 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 no. no. That's not true. That's not true. Because they, you can turn it off if you are if you are so inclined. You can say, I don't want to be messaged by one of these Tinder select dorks. You You can can turn it off. You can say, I don't want to be messaged by someone that I haven't uh, exclusively matched with. Oh, that makes. I wouldn't pay for it then. 
Yeah, but I, th- I think I don't it's to, not default. If I, I don't think get you... to message some woman who clearly does not want to talk to me, <laughs> then I'm not paying $500. Would you hide your badge? See, now that's, that's where it gets tricky. Would you want to have your, would you want people to know I'm horny enough to pay $500 no. a month for this? But the flip side of that is I can afford $500 a month to pay for this. No. So you wouldn't want people it, that's to That's what's funny. So they, they, uh, they mentioned Twitter when they bring that up. The, the, the fact badge. that you're, allowed, yeah. So if you go Tinder select, you'll get a little badge saying you're in Tinder select, but you can opt to hide it. The D for dipshit. Is it a D? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I do find it very funny. They, so they, in a nod to Twitter, because Twitter has now done this, where they've, they've introduced the feature where you can get rid of your blue badge, right. which is just such a funny... Because it's now a badge of shame, and they acknowledge right. that. Yeah. Which, it's insane that they've done that to themselves. What's more insane... A, a once sought after thing, now they're like, oh, God, do you want to turn... So people stop doing the fucking meme at you? This motherfucker paid for Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, you can't have that on. You can't be messaging girls. No, with you, that. you're right. You're right. Well, I I'm wifed up right now, so I I wouldn't participate in this. Even if I was on fuck, I I didn't have Tinder anyway. It's a it's a garbage fire. It's just you. It's just ads and bots, and it it, it just didn't feel real. Tinder anymore. is the worst one. Tinder's terrible. But yeah, so they're trying to cash in on this. These people who are getting more. They're trying to cash in on unrelentingly horny people. And it people pay. They were there. This article from The Verge cites how um, Tinder's parent company, Match Group, recently purchased The League, which was uh, an app geared toward ambitious, career oriented singles, which cost up to $1,000 a week. Yeah, I think a the, week. I th- huh? think, I think, but that's because you had a human fuck. matchmaker on the other side, probably going, going, hey. Not I probably they did. They, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think the league is a nod to the Ivy League. It's. Oh. It, I think it was. I think at first you had to go to one of the Ivies to get in, and now it's just Jesus a. Uh, you don't like that? No, because I didn't go to no Ivy school. And then, uh, and then I think they opened it up to normies. Ex- well, not nor. I mean, because our normies is going to pay a thousand dollars a week. No. To find love. No. I would like to see what kind of people are on there. They had Hinge had me buying them roses, I tell you. I bought them roses. I'd run out and be like, ah, because that's how they get you now. Because buying things on a phone doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel like real money. You double tap the thing, boom, it's paid for. It doesn't feel like real money. It's fun bucks. It's all fun bucks. I don't buy roses. Good for you. Why don't you brag about it? Did you, um, did you enter this relationship because of a rose? Did a I rose- don't remember. I would love to know. That's I can't a, that's remember. I data. might have. I might have. Yeah. Horniness can be good. It has, it's, has, it's got its perks. Which is what? That you find someone that you like and that you match with well. You think that's horniness? Well, if you, it, horniness <laughs> leads one to purchase digital fucking roses. <laughs> Absolutely, horniness does. Oh, gosh. Jesus Christ. This is all very bleak, though. The, just the commodification of... Uh... Of dating where it's, it's now, the problem is not that you don't have, have access to enough people. Yeah. Well, you got to be fearless <laughs> on the free version. You have, uh, you have plenty of, the problem is you spend mm. that $500 a month on. No, four ninety nine. Spend that four ninety nine on, uh, roses. Do you know how many roses you could get <laughs> on hinge with four, four hundred $499? That's so much. God damn. Oh man. Yeah, it, it, you know what other bots are out of control is those fucking text message bots, man. Why? Well, they're not even bots. I think it's probably a person on the other end in, in sub-Saharan Africa or Oh, something. are you getting a lot of... Oh, I get, I get one of those text messages like every day. Hello? I get, I get... Is this Becky? No? Oh, well, this is John. I'm, I'm, and they just, they, it's weird. They... They learn, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you ever get these? Mm-mm. Wow, Mm-mm. what the fuck? You don't get these? Just got a bad message. <laughs> really? It's fine. A bad message? <laughs> what do you mean? No, no, it's fine. Oh, boy. Folks, he's turning red. That must have been a terrible message. <laughs> fuck you, Emil, you fucker, you motherfucker. I was, I was looking for a funny message, and I was like, oh, gosh. 
Oh geez, man. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Or it's totally fine. I'm happy. To, I'm happy for you. Or sorry that happened. Uh, well, I guess we should probably wrap it up, man. We got a we got a hell of a bonus episode coming to you. We're gonna be talking about all sorts of stuff. You're just gonna have to go in there and find out. And again, we got these new tiers, chock full of shit. Patreon.com slash PayPigsPod. We we added uh, we're we're gonna be doing a monthly Q and A on one of the bonus episodes where you can call in and we'll do a Q and A segment right that's right we got monthly your book club my music playlists yeah I'm Boy. gonna do a playlist from here from time to time yeah or from that text message it's called Emil's bad text message playlist jeez he's crying you guys I don't know what to do here help me out. <laughs> Uh, so join us in the bonus. Otherwise we'll see you next week.